Hey guys, welcome back to another Joseph Fowler Maker video. And today we're building something special. Being up in Maine here, I've been racking my brain over something I could build for the Eclipse, and then it hit me. The Baylet from Berserk. Now, I've never read the manga, but I have played Elden Ring about five times through, which is basically the same thing. And I've always wanted to make one of these. I think it's a really cool prop, and I've seen a few of them made, but I wanted to make this out of wood. The closest thing I could find was this stuff called blood wood, which I'm not sure what kind of tree it's from, but all I can say is it's hard enough to carve and it is super dense. It did a number on my saw blade. It was really hard for that thing to cut through. So for starters, I had to find what I thought would be the best reference image, which is actually from the 1997 anime, which I did get the Blu-ray copy and you guys can too. It's been released for the first time. And uh, I gotta say, it looks really good on Blu-ray. So I found out some art and decided to draw it in 2D on the surface. So the next step here is actually, once I've got it drawn, is going to be cutting it out on the scroll saw. And we're gonna be using a traditional woodworker's strategy by cutting out one side, taping it back together, and cutting out the other. For my purposes, it was able to get me into that vague egg shape. And then from there, we just had to carve off the edges. When you guys get to the point in your carving, whether you're doing a regular face or a baylet like me, you generally wanna leave basic shapes. For the nose, I left a very tall pyramid, a triangle shape. For the eyes, I did somewhat of a football. And for the mouth, kind of the same thing. And then from there, we started to carve everything in. So when it came time to doing the top part, Traditionally, it would have been made out of brass and added onto it. I didn't have any of my casting equipment out yet since we just moved up here. And maybe in another iteration, we'll do that. I'd love to make the face being open. In that one, I'll probably make it out of clay and then do the brass top to it. But in this one, I ended up finding a copper staple and was able to flatten it out and make my loop, drill a hole in the top and just add it right on. And it worked out pretty good. I think some people might argue that it looks in the manga and it looks in the anime that this would probably be made out of brass, but I would wager that since Griffith was an orphan on the streets, it probably would be made out of wood and the brass part might have just been painted. So since I didn't have a chain or a leather strap, I ended up actually taking a piece of twine and braiding them together. And I think it turned out pretty good and it looks a little different than the manga, but I think it looks pretty cool. So I ended up actually using some Danish oil that I had left over for some previous projects. And I gotta say on this blood wood, it made the color really pop. Also any of the little dings and dents and scratches that I wasn't able to polish out, that medium dark color definitely soaked in and kind of made everything have a sort of dimension that I wouldn't have had with any other stain. While not being a very big project, this one definitely challenged me in ways I haven't had before. Carving something so small and so intricate was a lot of fun, but with it being finished, I was able to head on to my next step, which was going to see the eclipse. Hey, this is the solar eclipse taxi. I can't see anything. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so we're here at Tractor Supply because of course, I didn't get anything for the camera. So if we try to film the Eclipse with it, I'm gonna burn out my sensor. I don't know how I didn't think about this, but little birdie told me that's what I gotta do. So we're gonna go in there and see if we can find some welding shield. We need, in particular, uh, number 12, but we can stack up two fives and a nine, or a nine and one five, or a 10 and a five. So we gotta do some math and figure this out, because otherwise, I'm gonna burn out this lens and uh, I don't think I could afford to replace it. So let's go see what we can find. Okay, welding stuff, welding stuff, welding and tools. Shades, tens and nines are all gone. Oh well. So we're gonna have to go to the Waterville store, see if we can find something. And uh, yeah, maybe we can find it, stack it up, the perfect combination, because uh, otherwise we're looking at it, but you guys aren't. So I'd like to be able to film it. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Just leaving the parking lot and I managed to score two number nines, which should be the equivalent of like a 
rain or something, we'll be able to get the eclipse and get some pictures of it. So that's the cool part. We gotta see if this is as good as our local Wasser's hot dogs. Oh my god. That's a good hot dog. That's a good hot dog right there. <laughs> I mean, as a, as a dog man myself, it's a good hot dog. Hot dogs and liquid death. Sponsor me. This traffic is crazy. We almost didn't even get in. We got a nice view of an eighth inch of mountain sticking up over the tree line. So that's and nice to look and at. And a pupper. And a pupper. What, I am? What? It already started. Oh no. <laughs> you okay over there? Huh? She got the makings of a premium cinema glass here. Cover up the edge here. Turn the ISO to a billion. Yeah, yeah. With the help of my handy dandy filter. Yeah, that's the sun. I tell ya, you know, so much for a road trip and some filters, but what are you gonna do? At least we'll get to see something. As the eclipse started and eventually hit totality, I was filled with a sense of wonder and awe that I rarely feel. But witnessing the eclipse in person and seeing the celestial bodies pass each other filled me with such a sense of awe that it's hard to describe. All I could say is I wish you guys were there. We are out of here, guys. It's still very weird out. It is so weird. That was so weird. Aaron freaked out a little bit, and I don't blame her. It was so scary. I thought you couldn't look at it, and then someone said, okay, put your glasses back on. I was like, wait, I, I could have looked at it this whole time? <laughs> I, I just took mine off for like a second. You're not supposed to look at it, but like, when you look at it with the glasses, you almost couldn't see anything, but then when you take your glasses off, you can see the ring. I know it's kind of stupid, and if I shave 10 years off my eyesight life, then it is what it is. But hey, that was so crazy. That was insane. The birds started going crazy. The people started going crazy. And uh, I think sh some lady said that you hear a boom when like the thing happens. I don't know if that's true. You hear a boom she or- knew what she, was she said she knew what she was talking about. I thought some redneck just got crazy and it was the hour of the eclipse start shooting guns off or something. But uh, it was pretty cool. That was, uh, I'm not gonna forget that for a while. I, I felt something being there. It's, it's truly crazy. And I kind of thought about like if I was in like a, the 15th century, I was some peasant who hadn't gone to school, you know, and you're out there in your fields and you're plowing and all of a sudden the sun just starts going away. I, I, I would feel like it's the end of the world. That and uh, in Turkey too. Is it, remember those places they had built specifically for like, I guess. Oh yeah, we're thinking about like Graham Hancock, and they like they built all these buildings like specifically for the eclipse and stuff. Oh man, it's so crazy. Like, it's just, it's wild. I'm I'm just repeating myself. You're speechless. I'm speechless. Uh, truly. Well, that's not true because I keep talking. Now we got a road trip home, so we'll catch you later. So after getting back from that massive event, I was still a little jazzed up, and I ended up taking a second look at the baylet. I had to say that I could do a little bit better, so I went back to the grindstone and did a little bit more carving on one of the eyes and the mouth, and when you guys see the results, I think you'll agree, it really looks like the anime came to life. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya next time.
In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will.